Hi, everybody. My name is Skay. I'm the uh, founder here at Gusto, and we also have Noah joining us. Morning, everybody. Super happy to be here. Head of people over here at Gusto. Uh, really excited to chat about recognition today. Fantastic. All right. Well, let's dive in. Let's see here. As, as we're starting to get rolling, I'd love to hear where everyone's joining us from today. So if you, if you want to tell me what city you're joining us from in the chat, and maybe tell me what the weather's like, because, you know, let's, let's see where we're all at. But uh, as, as Skay sort of starts going through the agenda. Great. So uh, just a, a quick look at the agenda here for today. So uh, we're going to start um, with a look at what is culture? You know, there are a lot of misconceptions around, you know, what culture is. So I'd love to kind of, you know, iron that out, get really clear on that and why it matters now more than ever. Um, <clears throat> next, we're going to jump into, and what I'm really excited to, to teach you today, and, and, and Noah um, is going to help with this, is, a, is our ACE, your culture model. And it lays out a framework for how to shape great culture at your organization uh, using recognition to do that. Uh, lastly, I want to help you prepare to generate buy-in for your programs from all stakeholders. Uh, so we'll look at kind of employees and managers and leadership, et cetera, there, and, and how to generate buy-in. We've got um, about 45 minutes for the presentation. Uh, we're going to do our best to give you as much valuable content uh, as we can. Uh, we'll have a few minutes at the end for questions, but feel free to kind of put those in the chat as we go here. Um, and then lastly, uh, for those that would like to kind of stick around to the end, we, we do have kind of a special offer um, uh, if you're interested in learning more about kind of Gusto. Okay, so before we dive in, though, I'd love to start with a quick story. And so years back now, it was almost 10 years ago, we started Gusto as a mobile app to send drinks. So you could, you know, buy a beer for a friend or a bottle of wine for a client, something like that. And uh, we took the idea, we thought it was pretty cool, we took it to Dragon's Den, which is the equivalent of Shark's, uh, Shark Tank here in Canada. Um, wild experience, we were in there for well over an hour, uh, getting, getting grilled by all the dragons. And at the time, I think we had maybe $10,000 in, in gift card sales. So, um, <clears throat> you know, just, just getting things off the, uh, off the ground. And the dragons were really concerned that we weren't growing our uh, app user base by mandating app downloads to, to redeem uh, gifts. And so we challenged them on this point. And, um, you know, as many people wouldn't, we actually tested this, wouldn't actually send a gift to somebody if, if they mandated that that person had to redeem a gift. Uh, or, or download the app to, to redeem it. Um, so in the end, we left with no deal and we were running out of money uh, pretty fast. Uh, shortly afterwards, we started seeing a few HR people starting to use our app uh, to regularly send gifts uh, to employees. And so we kind of leaned in into this a little bit and, and that's when we made the pivot to, hey, this is, this is something that HR people um, are really interested in. And you know, we didn't know a lot about um, uh, HR or, or kind of um, uh, recognition at that point, but um, we saw that there was kind of a, a need there. Um, shortly afterwards, and serendipitously, the investment regulations in Canada here changed, um, allowing us to offer uh, early adopters, uh, basically anybody, to own shares in, in a company. And so we went on to become the first company in Canada to close a round of equity crowdfunding. So instead of, of a bunch of profit hungry kind of venture capitalists behind us. We actually have a bunch of passionate early adopter customers that are helping us to build an amazing platform uh, that solves their problem. Um, so we were off, off to the races at this point, or so we thought. Um, we started getting some traction, but it was slow going for a few years and we were always a step kind of behind our competitors. And so we're trying to figure out what was going on. And we got this wake up call in the form of a one-star review on Glassdoor. And you can actually go to our Glassdoor uh, profile and see it there from a few years back. And the irony was that we were selling an employee recognition tool that we weren't using internally at our own company. And this was the moment that we decided to make our people and our culture our top priority. And as soon as we did this, everything changed. And so after you know years of um, kind of running the company now and, and, and getting things off the ground. We work with thousands of HR leaders and we realized that our best customers have a certain way of working. And so we interviewed them and extracted as many of, you know, as much information um, about how they were kind of doing things 
And we've put it together into, into this webinar uh, so that hopefully we can help you build great culture at your organization. So with that, what is culture? And I'd love to pass it here to our head of people, uh, Noah, our culture expert. And um, he's gonna kind of run us through this part. Awesome, thanks Kay. Um, <clears throat> really excited to talk a little bit about what is culture and how to build it and how to make it a little bit easier for organizations. Um, as I'm sort of walking through this, I'd love to hear what everyone thinks in chat. What is culture? Give me a quick answer um, and we'll sort of keep going as we're rolling because we're short on time, but let me know what you think culture is um, in your organizations. So what, what we can all say is like, is it those ping pong tables? Is it those free lunches? Is it the beer on tap or the coffee on tap? Is it the perks? Is it the things that you see in your office? Um, and can we just put those things into an office and say, we have great culture? Um, probably not, no. Um, so um, culture, as, as uh, Tammy put it, right? I really like this, uh, how an organization behaves in general. And so the way that we've sort of defined culture is very similar. Is, Culture is the company's character. It's the uh, it's it's not let's not get it mixed up with values and beliefs. Those are the aspirations of an organization. But it's how your people act in an organization. It's how they behave, and it's how they're making decisions. And it's the shared way of your whole team doing things together. So that's acting on projects, collaborating, working towards each working with each other to push the company forward. And so, what makes a great culture? And so we have found that there are three main components of culture. Um, and so we use an acronym, POW, to help us remember this. Um, and any guesses in chat as to what any of these letters mean, uh, P, O, and a W. Uh, Heather says what the organizational environment is defined as by the people there. So tribal knowledge and behaviors. Yes, perfect. Uh, Lisa says the norms that have been set up by the top level down. I love it. Um, people over work. Yes, thank you. Great, great definitions of culture coming into the chat. Um, so thinking about these, these three letters, what makes great culture, P-O-W, POW. Um, let's jump into the first one. Let's talk about the P. What is that P? So the first that we've talked about and that we've defined is purpose. Um, and we define purpose as um, our people in organizations they need to feel a connection to the company's purpose. So not just, uh, you know, making money. Every company is trying to make money. But what is the true purpose of your organization? They need to understand how their role and the contributions they are making are meaningful and impactful to that purpose. And then once they do, once they really see the that, that connection there, that alignment, they'll bring a lot of passion to their role. And we see this day in and day out um, with employees who feel a true purpose in, within their organizations. And that makes for a great culture. Um, now let's, let's move on to the O. The second, the O, is opportunity. And so our people in our organizations need to have the opportunity to grow. And so this is a big piece of anyone because if you're not growing in an organization, you're pretty quick to leave. So this is more than just promotions and pay increases. Um, it's a chance to develop new skills, feel challenged, um, and have a voice and experience success, um, as well as failures. Um, Skay, you want to jump over to the next slide? Um, when there's an opportunity for growth in a safe and inclusive space, um, our people will embrace that growth at a personal and professional level. And so this means they're upskilling their communication skills, their ability to give feedback to one another and receive that feedback. Um, and then also the technical skills to do their roles. Um, and that helps make great culture. And so let's move on to the next piece of this triangle, the W, well-being. And so this is a big piece. And so our people need to feel that their well-being is a company priority, not just a side thought. They need to feel a part of a community that is inclusive, where they are safe and supported. And so that support goes beyond professional support. It also goes to per personal support, especially in this time where we're all remote and we're all dealing with kids at home, maybe you're homeschooling still, um, or, you know, someone has a cough and they can't go anywhere anymore because of COVID. And so this support needs to encompass both personal and professional support. Um, and when they can 
when they feel that well-being and that the company believes it's a priority, they can bring their strongest and most capable authentic selves to work. And that makes for great culture because when we have that authenticity, people can bring their diverse, creative ideas without fear of being pushed down. And so let's let's review let's review our power model here. And so we've got purpose, opportunity, and well-being. So when people feel a sense of purpose, they will come to work with passion. When people feel they have an opportunity, they will embrace growth. And when people feel a sense of well-being and that it's a priority for the organization they will bring their full authenticity to the organization. And these three components can create great culture within an organization. And so let's talk quickly about why culture matters. And so our, our, um, or, or, and our, our host is gonna throw up a quick, quick poll right now. So let's, let's get that poll up there. Um, and so how big of a company priority is improving your culture now? And so quickly let us know, what do you think that is? I'll give this a few seconds. Let's see what's happening here. Okay, we lost the presentation. There it is. All right, all right. So we're seeing a lot of moderates, a lot of highs, and a few criticals, and only one person saying low. So most people, this is pretty important. I'd say at least you know fifty percent are in the high and critical. Like this is like one of the most important things that you're going to be doing over the next quarter or a few quarters. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. Thank you for sharing that. So let's talk about why culture matters now more than ever. So there are, there are two major shifts happening in the world. One is they're both already kind of here. Um, but the first is the remote work trend. We're all in this. We're all seeing this within our organizations. We've got team members who are remote. We've got maybe all of our team members are remote. And maybe some of them are still in the office or have to be in production facilities or whatnot. But we have a segment of our organization that is remote or wants to be remote. Um, and it's really difficult for people to feel connected and feel engaged when they're remote. And so how do you help doing that? So recognition is a big one to do this. And so what's the second, second piece that we see here? Millennials and the younger generations after them are now the majority of the workforce. And as the largest segment of the workforce, they are looking for organizations and companies that make them feel that their contributions matter and are valued. So there's that sense of purpose and opportunity. They feel supported and included, that, that growth. They feel connected and empowered to grow um, and they align with the mission and the vision. And so they want purpose, they want opportunity for growth and they want that well-being. They wanna feel that their contributions are valued and that, that it's meaningful. Um, and so if we're not intentional about creating an inclusive, empathetic and resilient cultures and rewarding the behaviors we want to see in our organizations, we risk, we almost guarantee Microcultures and questionable behavior cropping up to hit short term metrics and goals that don't actually push the organization forward. But if we can get culture right or steer it in the right direction, because as HR professionals, we don't make culture, we can pr create frameworks and we can create policies and we can create um, ways to steer the culture in the right direction. But it will impact everything from engagement to performance to productivity to retention, innovation, it'll, uh, it really touches every part of our organization. Advocacy, recruitment, this culture is who our organizations are. And by having great culture, you can really create an edge on the competition around hiring and retaining um, the, the people you need to push your organization forward. And so we created, uh, oh, sorry, second poll, let's get into this. So. Um, how much is your company using recognition to shape culture? So give us an answer in the poll. Let's see what's happening there. Give me a few seconds. I'll take a sip of my tea. Oh, we lost the poll. We lost your presentation. There it is. <clears throat> okay. Okay. Let's give it another couple seconds. Yeah, I'd love to see that. Like the, uh, the presentation here for me now. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. So we're, um, Okay, okay, we've got about 70% of participants answering. Thank you so much to everybody who answered. Um, so what we're seeing is that, you know, most people aren't using recognition to shape culture 
we've got maybe 28% of people who are doing it frequently or all the time. Most people are in that sometimes. So that's like inconsistent recognition or it's kind of not, not structured. It's more of the like manager saying thank you or good job or whatnot there and very little. So that, that tells me that probably almost nothing's happening there. Or if it is happening, it's probably just you and your HR team that is doing it. So kudos to you for trying. All right, <clears throat> let's move on. So to help with recognition in shaping culture, we developed what we call the ACE Your Culture model. And so we developed this after speaking to hundreds and hundreds of HR professionals, the clients that we work with every day. Um, so let's dive into using recognition to build this great culture. And so uh, at the center, we're driving towards one objective and that is great culture. And as you recall, there were the three main components we, we talked about that create great culture. This is purpose, opportunity, and well-being. Now, to produce these outcomes, we need to align, connect, and empower our people. So this is, this is our ACE model. So we need to align, connect, and empower organizations that will lead to well-being, opportunity, and purpose, and that will lead to great culture. And these are things that we all have to do together at an organization. So let's start with the first piece, align. How do we align our people using recognition? So, excuse me, alignment is all about getting everyone the information they need to understand where the company is going and how they can contribute to that mission and that purpose. And so it's about being transparent so that we can get everyone going in the same direction with the right information. And so if there is no alignment within an organization, there's no trust. So let's just say that again, no alignment, no trust. And without trust, communication breaks down quickly. And here's why. In any human interaction, the level of communication required is inversely related to the level of trust. So if I trust you completely, I don't need explanations uh, or more communication um, on your actions, because I know what you're doing is in my best interests or in the best interests of the organization if I implicitly and completely trust you. If I don't trust you, or if I don't trust the executives, or if I don't trust the organization, then no amount of talking or sound bites will affect, will have an effect on me, as I won't believe that whatever you're saying is telling the truth or acting in my best interests or the interests of the organization. And therefore, I'm not really going to do the best job there if I don't trust. I'm going to do what I need to do to keep my head down, not be noticed. So that means doing the bare minimum, not going above and beyond, but also not doing poorly. And so you get a whole sort of culture of mediocrity going on there. And so for large and remote organizations, communication is a huge challenge. I'm sure you've all noticed this in your organization. Even in small organizations, it's hard. Um, so building trust is critical to ensuring that the communication that is happening is flowing freely and is being taken in without pushback. And so I think Simon says it best is a team is not a group of people that work together. A team is a group of people that trust each other. And so I think when he says team, he really means effective teams. So teams that are effective, they're your top performers. They're the ones that are driving your organization forward. So let's talk about our three tips to align using recognition to help build that trust. So the first one is this is this is being consistent. And so this is setting the tone and the foundation of your organization. You can't just put your mission and your vision up on a wall and kind of be done with this. People pay attention to reward programs. So it's great to leverage that opportunity to really be consistent in setting the foundation and ensuring that your leaders are walking the talk. They're talking about the mission. They're talking about the vision. They're talking about the purpose. They're describing why the company exists in all programs and communications and across multiple channels. And so this is using omni-channel communication. So this is using your newsletters, email, internet, meetings, Slack, or if you use Microsoft Teams, reiterating why the company exists in the first place. Um, and then ensuring that those leaders are walking the talk, that they're, they're embodying those, those, that mission and that vision and that purpose um, and getting them to consistently recognize the people in your team across the organization, not just their executives or the directors or the managers, but also your individual contributors. Your, your frontline customer support person is getting a piece of recognition from the VP of sales. How good would that feel? So that really 
that recognition to push the company toward the mission and the vision and the purpose is really powerful and can really get people connected to it. And if we want others to do the same, the leaders, your executive team, your CEOs, your founders have to do it as well. And this will start to shape great culture. So let's look at a quick piece of data. So 88% of those who know core values say they are engaged. And we all know that an engaged employee is a more productive employee. They're there every day, they're living the mission, they're living the purpose, and they're producing results. So if we can get our executives teams to tie in those values, then we get the good things. So tip number two, tie it to core values. <laughs> so this, this is really, um, this is a simple one, tie your recognition program to core values. So these are the drivers that align your team around your mission, your purpose, all those great things. And so some really simple ways to do this is start meetings with core value shout outs. So if you've, you've got a weekly meeting with your team, you know, recognize one or two people on your team that did something really great the week previously that is connected to one of your core values or, or whatever you call your values. I know I've heard other people call them their core behaviors or their uh, uh, core drivers, whatever you want to call it. Um, give managers uh, rewards to give out for monthly core values. And so every, you know, month they, you know, give out a reward for people who are uh, embodying those core values. Um, and then, you know, crowdsource, do the peer-to-peer -peer recognition, get your employees to submit stories for awards. And it's simple. You can do this through, you know, a Google sheet or form or a survey monkey or type form. Like it's easy to set something up for free um, and just get employees to start, you know, submitting peer recognition on people who are embodying the core values and how they're helping them out. So let's look at another piece of data. Um, only 14% of employees know their company's direction. Let's sit with that for a second. Only 14%, just over a 10th of your organization knows the company's direction. That's shocking. And if someone doesn't really know the company direction, how can they really push it forward? If they don't know which way they're going. So how can they align with and work towards your company's mission, the vision, objectives, of the line of the purpose, if you're not communicating what they are and reinforcing them with recognition? So that's going to our third tip, rewarding objectives. And so we want to recognize the achievements and the behaviors that move the company towards its vision. This is really important and its purpose and its mission. And we can do this on an individual or even team basis to get people working together, that collaboration, building that trust. For example, we can reward the customer support team for reaching 100 happy support calls with no issues unresolved. So collecting that data and using NPS scores. Um, or if you're in the manufacturing and shipping business, one week with no delayed shipments. And so setting these micro objectives that are very achievable and then rewarding your team will build that, you know, that, that, that alignment, that purpose that like, oh, okay, if I, if I do something, I see that it actually affects me as an individual. I'm being rewarded for doing a good job and not just, you know, showing up. Um, so purporting these rewards in place for objectives also forces us to set very clear objectives. And that in itself is very powerful because I'm sure we've all worked in organizations where the objectives that we've been told to achieve are very ambiguous and we have no idea what we actually have to do to achieve them. But by attaching a reward to it, you have to make it measurable. Um, we'll never get somewhere if we don't know where that where is. And so by setting objectives with clear setting clear objectives, sorry, that you can attach a reward to, you really understand where to push the organization forward. So tie recognition to these real company objectives and not just for showing up. All right, so let's let's review a line. Let's recap this. So this requires that our uh, our leadership is really both communicating and recognizing people. And so this is really ensuring that we're um, being consistent. Um, we're rewarding our objectives. Um, and we're tying recognition to these core values. And so if we, we fail to align our people, we won't have trust. And so again, trust is critical with communication and collaboration. All right, let's move on to the next one. Connect, C. So connection, it's all about getting people to care personally about each other. Personally, that means that you care as an individual about the well-being of your teammate. 
And as a manager, you care personally about the well-being of your team. This is especially important while people are working remote because you can't, it's harder to show that care when you're behind a Zoom screen or a Microsoft Teams. So humans have actually have the, have, have had the need for connection baked into our genetics. For thousands of years, we have needed tribes just to survive. Evolution. But now our tribes are different. In order for our teams to thrive, we need to help them connect and work together. Our tribe is now made up of a large segment of the people that we work with. There's other part of our tribes, our friends and our family, but the people we work with, our coworkers, are also a big part of our tribe now. And so to build that connection, we need to, we need to as an organization, really push that forward and have that as a priority. And that will really help create collaboration. And so when there's no connection between our team members, there's no collaboration. Let's, let's, let's look at that again. No connection, no collaboration. And without collaboration, it's hard to achieve great things as just a group of individuals. So if we're not building true authentic connections, then we're not collaborating as teams. And so Michael Jordan says it great. Talent wins games, but teamwork wins championships. So now let's talk about three tips to connect using recognition. So our first, peer-to-peer -peer nominations. This is a nice one. We talked a little bit about this earlier. If you're still in office or you've got a warehouse or you've got a production facility, put a box with a pad of paper where people can really easily just write a quick note about somebody on the team that's done something really amazing, put it in the box. And you can read those out at your monthly all hands or whenever you have your all hands. Or you can use a Google form or a TypeScript form or whatever form to collect those nominations. Um, you can do a weekly draw or monthly draw again whenever you're doing those all hands and you pull a few of those out and give a gift, gift card, virtual or otherwise. Um, you can also do a monthly reward. So you can tally up who's giving the most and who's receiving the most and give those people rewards for you know, embodying those core values and, and driving the mission and vision and purpose of the organization forward. Um, and you can also do quarterly awards for each core value. So you, if however many you have, or have core drivers, whatever you call them, um, you choose, you have your executive or your management team, look through all the peer nominations and choose a couple or one and attach it to each core value and give a monthly or quarterly reward to that. And then really call that person out and really you know celebrate their achievements. All right, let's tip number two. So these, <clears throat> or team building rewards. And so these are really things like, you know, attaching your rewards to building the community within your organization and connecting people. So this can be your, you know, your team trivia. So, you know, crowdsourcing trivia about individuals within your organization and then playing games and having people learn about each other and their hobbies and their interests and what their cat's name is or how many kids they have or, you know, how often their dog goes for a walk or whatever. You know, these are the things that connect us as individuals. And then you can do things around wellness goals. So whether that's physical or mental wellness goals. And so these are things like doing month long um, exercise goals. And so you can break people up into teams, but make it cross disciplinary. So you have members of your sales team, your marketing team, your development team, your customer support team, all on the same team for this physical challenge working together to try and win or come together and but make it as inclusive and possible as possible so when you do something that's around phys physicality make sure that you're not saying everyone has to run or everyone has to ride their bike make it self-choice you can walk you can run you can ride your bike you can swim you can go get groceries you can count your steps you can do your peloton you can do your treadmill you can you know and, run around the backyard with your five-year-old because that's more exhausting than anything else. We all know that. Um, and then well, mental wellness goals is around meditation. So you could have people keep a log of when they're meditating or when they're using their Headspace app or just, you know, you could even build that into some team meetings. Be like, you know what, for the first minute of this all hands, we're just going to, we're just going to breathe together. Everyone turn off their cameras and take a moment. Um, so building it into that and, and connecting people through those different ways. So the third one, our third tip here is, public recognition. And so most people really love 
being recognized publicly. We all like having that little boost to our ego. Let's all be honest here. Um, and it feels good. Feels good when somebody says thank you and you did a really great job. And so you can boost that by putting it on your company internet, on TVs if you're in the office or production facilities, on bulletin boards, in your newsletters. Just call out those like quarterly core value awards, whatever you want to do. Uh, you can have, set up a channel in your team collaboration. So whether that's in Microsoft Teams or Slack um, and have people share recognition there. Um, and if you're giving rewards, have people share what they're buying with those rewards in there. And that kind of creates a nice little feedback loop of like, I got a $50 Amazon gift card. And you know what? I bought that whatever that I've really wanted or that helped me buy that rowing machine that I've always wanted, but I never really bought because I thought it was a little bit too expensive. But now I've got like a few rewards from work. So I'm not paying for it all myself. Um, and so they can talk about that. Um, celebrate the mistakes. This is also really important. Show that people can fail. And I think this is really important for your executives to come in and say, I made a mistake. I had a big whoopsie or whatever you want to call it um, and talk about it at the all hands um, and just sort of, you know, personify that failure and experimentation is really important to innovation. And if people can see that it's OK for the failures to fail or the leaders to fail sometimes, then it's OK for your frontline workers to fail sometimes as well. Um, but the big caveat to all of this is that some people don't like the spotlight. And so really understanding who your people are and what they like, because you're going to have the, the introverts and the people who don't like that public recognition. And so really leaning on your managers to understand whom on their team wants to have that public recognition and who doesn't. And that doesn't mean not to recognize them. That just means to recognize them in different ways, usually privately, one on one or within team settings where they feel comfortable with the immediate team that they're with. Um, <clears throat> so just keep that in mind. And an easy way to do this is just to send out a survey and say, hey, we're going to be experimenting with some recognition. If you don't want to have you, if you don't want to be publicly recognized in front of the whole company, please let us know and we won't do it. And then just have a list of those people. Very simple. And, it, and those people will really appreciate and connect more with your organization because that shows that you care about their well-being because you're asking them. How would you like to be recognized? So again, that's that, that alignment piece, that connecting. All right, so let's, let's recap a little bit here. So we need to connect our people. And to do this, we need to create safe, supportive, and inclusive environment. And so to do that, we need to create peer-to-peer -peer recognition. We need to set up team building rewards so people can have an opportunity in a fun environment to learn about each other and learn about our hobbies and what makes us tick. And then also that public recognition piece of like, let's, let's talk about it. Let's be loud about how, how great our teams are. And if we don't connect our people, we won't have collaboration. Let's talk about this last piece now, empowerment. Let's empower our people. So this is all about helping our people acquire the skills that they need and then letting them own their own projects and results. So letting them kind of run with it. If any of you have kids, this is probably the hardest thing you have to do about kids is to let them run and make their own mistakes and fall on their faces. But it's the same is true with our teams. We have to empower them to go and make the mistakes that will help them grow. And so when there's no empowerment, there's also no leadership. Because if you're never allowed to lead, then how can you become a leader? And without leadership, there's no success. And leadership doesn't mean management. It doesn't mean executives. It means leading projects. It means taking that extra bit of effort to ensure that customer the issue was resolved instead of saying, well, my shift's done and I'm just going to clock out. But taking that extra 15 minutes and being like, you know what, I'm just going to stay and make sure this person's taken care of. And it's really critical to empower our people and allow them to do this, but also to allow them to make mistakes. And so I think Brené Brown says this really well. There's no innovation and creativity without failure, period. If we don't fail, we can't be creative and innovate. And innovation is becoming the number one thing that is def that is defining the companies that have success and the companies that don't have success. Because if you can't be innovating, then you're not moving forward. So let's talk about our three tips to power, use, em empower, not power, empower using recognition. So easy one, learning and development rewards. So when people are, <clears throat> excuse me, completing trainings, when they're implementing those ideas and inter implementing those learnings, or when they're bringing innovative ideas to the organization, reward and recognize those contributions to your organization. Even if you can't use those ideas right then and there, still reward the fact that they're bringing those ideas to the table, that they're 
putting themselves out there and being vulnerable for a moment and saying, I think this is a good idea. And instead of saying, no, we can't do that. Be like, that's a great idea. Thank you so much for that contribution. We're going to look at this and see if we can do it at this time and then follow up with that individual. But reward the fact that people are trying to improve themselves and by proxy, improve the organization. Let's look at this next one. Number two, coaching performance. And so this is really for both employees and managers and directors and executives. Everyone should be coached at all levels of the organization. Um, so this is setting goals together and rewarding that success. And these don't, that doesn't just mean long-term goals like promotions and pay raises, but also those micro goals that we were talking about earlier, those micro objectives. Um, so, you know, in one month, I hope to do X. Great. Let's reward that when you're done by recognizing it and giving you something or maybe not, but still recognizing that it happened. Um, also, just ask people if they feel recognized. This is such an easy thing to do. Send out a survey in your organization and just ask people, do you feel recognized for the work that you do here? Make it anonymous and see what people say. It might be surprising because I, I know I fell into this trap as an HR leader of like, you think, oh, yeah, everyone must feel recognized because they're doing their job and doing whatnot. And then when you actually take the poll, you're like, oh, my God, only a quarter of the people that work here are actually feeling recognized. I mean, we fell into this trap at Gusto. <laughs> we sell this stuff. Um, so and then allow managers to see the benchmarks. Let them see where their team actually sits on that feeling of recognition. Maybe you're going to the, your marketing team or your sales team or your development team and saying, hey, your people are only feeling 15 to 20 percent recognized right now. You know, let's let's boost that up. Or you just talk to all your managers in one big sitting. If you keep it at 100 percent honest and say, look, at our organization, we're only sitting at this percentage of recognized recognition. We need to boost that. So here are a couple of things that you can all start doing pretty easily. And then also integrating it into your performance reviews. So talking about recognition, um, if you're doing peer-to-peer -peer nominations, really bringing that in, but also coaching your managers during the performance reviews and have your managers coach their team members on how to you know, give recognition to each other or down or up. All right, let's look at this, this third one. And so this is manager budgets. And so this is really, if you want to take it to the next step, but it's very powerful, but you want to keep it simple, minimize approvals. Like literally you want to have no approval whatsoever. Just giving managers a budget and saying, you have this for the month, use it and I'll re-up it next month. That is the approval process is they get a limited amount of money per month. Um, give them Amazon or Starbucks or Tim Hortons or whatever it is that kind of you think will be most effective e-gift cards so that they can just email them to people. And it's very simple. Um, but the big thing here is the managers need to keep track of all their sent gifts for financial and auditing purposes. And so, because this is a taxable reward that you're gonna be giving to your people and that needs to be taken care of on the financial side of things. Okay, let's recap. This is the last part, empower. So we need to empower our people. To do this, we not only need to allow people to take on new challenges and responsibilities, we need to reward learning and development. We need to coach performance and reward that success. And we need to empower our managers with budgets to reward their people. And if we don't empower our people, we won't have leadership. And without leadership, we're not moving forward. We're not innovating. We're not having people own and be responsible for results and contributing to our organization. So there is the nine ways to shape great culture. I want to say thank you, everyone, for listening. And so I'm going to quickly run through this again. I'm just, you know, you need to align, connect, and empower your people. You want to, to do that, you're going to create a purpose, opportunity, and well-being. And that, in turn, really can create amazing culture in your organizations. So I'm going to stop talking now. I'm going to give my voice a little break. Thank you so much. And I'm going to turn things back over to Skay, who's going to talk us through a couple more things. Fantastic. Thank you, Noah. Um, so hopefully uh, that's a nice framework to kind of uh, use with your teams. Um, I'd love to, you know, um, run you through a, a quick case study here. Um, <clears throat> so a client of ours, Purdy's Chocolatier, um, based in Vancouver, Canada, uh, about 700 employees, they they had pretty good culture. They were doing a lot, a lot of the right things, you know, in, in speaking to kind of their head of people. Uh, but they consistently were receiving feedback um, in those surveys and exit interviews uh, that people felt like they could use a little more recognition, like they could be celebrating some wins. Um, and management was skeptical about whether a recognition program um, was really going to do anything. 
for them. And so when they launched uh, their uh, recognition program, they actually saw three times their target engagement, so what they were expecting. And so um, the feedback about needing more recognition went away. And it wasn't because people didn't want recognition anymore. It was simply because they had been successful in building a culture of recognition where it was happening, happening on a kind of uh, regular and consistent basis across the organization. And so what I'd love to run you through really quick here, we've got about uh, eight minutes left in the presentation, is just how to generate stakeholder buy-in. And so there's a number of kind of different stakeholders when, when launching a new program. Um, so we want to make sure that we're prepared to address all of their concerns. So the first are employees. Uh, employees will not like getting taxed. Noah mentioned that you know uh, rewards are taxable uh, benefits. So it's important to give them the option to opt out of the program so that they feel in control. Now, most people, when asked if they would like you know, to receive a reward and have to pay tax versus receiving nothing, will we'll opt to kind of um, participate. Um, but it's just important that they understand. Next are managers. Uh, your managers are busy. They got a million things going on. Um, they never like kind of new work and process and programs kind of being added to their plate. Um, so it's all about kind of involving those managers in creating the program. And like Noah mentioned, kind of, you know, very simple approval process, keep things simple. Um, it can also be a really good idea to, to pilot a program if you're a larger organization with you know, one or two teams um, so that you can show some results from those and, and get some brand or some program champions, some other managers that can speak about the, uh, the success of the program. Third up is the, uh, the finance department. And so finance team wants simple reports. Um, so maybe for cost centers or uh, taxable benefits. And so you wanna make sure to talk to your finance team in advance of launching a recognition program learn about their workflows and what's going to make their life kind of as easy as possible. And lastly, uh, executive. So it's difficult to launch any program without the approval of your executive team. Um, they're going to want to know what the impact of it is of the program. Now, it's important to kind of broaden the conversation and com uh, communicate like the intangible uh, benefits of a recognition program and what that can do for your culture. You can share the um, POW and ACE model there that, that Noah ran through. Um, with them, but ROI is, is kind of where, where they're going to want to kind of lean in. So we're going to, we're going to want to show our leaders that a recognition program is not just a cost, but rather an investment that can earn them a return. And so let's run through that. Um, but firstly, um, you, can, you can share the impact, you know, based on some studies that, you know, high levels of recognition uh, can have on boosting morale nine times, engagement eight times, desire to to stay and, and uh, consequently retention two and a half times. Um, so there's lots of studies out there uh, that, that demonstrate this, but let's just run through kind of a quick example of a company with a $25 million annual payroll. If they took 1%, and this is, you know, some of our, um, some of our best clients, you know, they'll, they'll commit to kind of doing 1% in real-time rewards. Um, that's $250,000 investment. Okay. And, formalizing your recognition program uh, can have some incredible efficiency gains. So rather than, you know, all these different managers doing different things and expensing things up um, uh, and finance team trying to keep track of all these different spreadsheets, uh, there's a lot of efficiency there. Um, the next is absenteeism. So if your people feel appreciated for their contributions, they'll be less likely to take sick days, which will lead to sizable savings. Onboarding. If you've built a strong culture of collaboration and leadership using recognition, your team members will help new people ramp up much faster, uh, which can deliver significant savings there. And companies with recognition culture, uh, recognition rich culture, experience 31% lower turnover. And here's where things get really interesting on the ROI chart. So we all know that turnover is very costly. You have to recruit higher train uh, the replacement. There's also the risk that the new person doesn't work out. And so even with you know, half of that, a 15% boost in retention can be a huge uh, savings there. And lastly, uh, and most impactful is going to be around productivity. So companies with higher engagement benefit from 21% productivity gains. And this translates, you know, even if we did half of that again at 10%, a two and a half million dollar return. Uh, with a 10% boost in productivity. So a total return 
of $4 million or 16 times your initial investment. And so if you share this with your executive teams and walk them through this, it can be very impactful. This doesn't even capture the benefits of creating a better employer brand, employees advocating and referring uh, other candidates so that you can help to kind of you know, recruit and, and build an even stronger team. So, so hopefully this can kind of help, um, help you build the case for, for your organization. Now, we've showed you nine ways to take action and, and all of that, you know, you can, you can kind of do manually. Um, and I encourage you to, to start doing some of these things immediately. Uh, but there is uh, a, a bit of a problem. And that is that, you know, it'll take a, a lot of admin time. There's, you know, new, new hires potentially to kind of run the program. Um, <clears throat> delayed delivery if you have kind of uh, manual processes for mailing out gift cards or other physical uh, gifts. Inconsistency either across teams or even individuals being inconsistent in their recognition if they don't have kind of a tool to do it easily. Uh, exclusive, you know, being the opposite of an inclusive. Um, uh, if different people have different access to kind of the recognition program. And then obviously uh, reporting errors. And so um, there is a solution. And this is kind of what we've been working on for the last uh, 10, 10 years here um, is our platform, um, you know, uh, Gusto can help HR leaders um, address these challenges and, and build a culture of recognition. And we're down to kind of the last few minutes. So I'm just going to kind of skip through here uh, the last few slides. But, you know, we help, we've really thought deeply about how our platform can help to align, connect, and empower and build those features in, into our platform. And we're also really proud to have partnered with the OneDrop Foundation from day one. You know, we made a lot of mistakes, but this is one thing that we definitely got right. So for every Gusto gift that gets sent, we actually donate a day of clean drinking water through the OneDrop Foundation. Um, we're also, um, you know, encouraging people to do their due diligence. There's a number of different providers out there. They all serve kind of a little bit of a different purpose, um, but we're proud to be kind of the number one highest rated uh, on the G2 as well as Captera platforms. So, so go and kind of read about those. And to, to wrap up uh, with an offer for everyone, uh, if you are interested in learning more about Gusto, uh, you can book a demo with our team um, this week. So you don't have to do the demo this week, just book it. And uh, we're offering a free uh, year on our nomination box, uh, which is a $600 value for any organization with 100 people. Obviously, if you have more than 100 people, the value goes up. And then free onboarding as well. So just visit get.gusto.com uh, backslash hr.com. So that's it. Uh, we do have kind of a minute here for questions. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> if you want to put them in the chat. Otherwise, um, I'd actually encourage you, there's some contact details on the slide, but we do have a booth uh, here at the hr.com uh, event uh, with a number of our employees um, hanging out there. So I'd encourage you to stop by and ask those questions. Kim, are you there? Do we have time for questions? I, I think we're right on time here. We are actually right on time. You're right. I just wanted to make sure that um, the your uh, email address got into everyone. So Kevin, if you can just make sure that in the chat, it gets out to everyone. That would be wonderful. And we do need to wrap up. So um, what a wonderful presentation and filled uh, to the brim as I expected it would be. So this concludes the webcast for now. I'd like to thank you as our presenters, as well as everyone who joined us today. If you joined late and would like to view this webcast again, the recording and slides will be available at, on hr.com in our archive virtual events. Your HRCI credit will show up in your hr.com account within two business days. We will also send out an email with the credit information. Please take a few moments to fill out the webcast survey that will open up on your screen. Your feedback is very important to us. Thank you all and enjoy the rest of the event. Take care. Thanks everybody.